we are going to talk a little bit about the standing committee. So I'll read this in English. There's a Malay version being circulated if you want that. Yeah? Uh, this is a really a historic day because the speaker has put this on our table, which is the formation of six new standing committees. Yeah? So uh, my office, we've been working on uh, drafting a, a recommendation for this for about uh, three months. Uh, so we've got our, we published our paper yesterday. Yeah? So uh, this is good, good timing in the sense that we are going to comment a little bit about the new standing committees. Yeah? Well, I'll read my statement. My office published our standing committee for new Malaysia paper yesterday. It is available for download from my website at the link below. I won't read the link. Uh, I'm very happy to note that the parliament is set to have six new standing committees. They are as follows. And this is in the document that was presented to us this morning. There's going to be a committee for consideration of bills a committee for budget, committee on rights and gender equality, committee on major public appointments, committee on defence and home affairs, and committee on federal state relations. These six committees actually add to the current five that is available, the Public Accounts Committee, which I'm a member of, Standing Orders Committee, House Committee, Committee of Privileges, and Selection Committee. Now, standing committees in Malaysia are essential for democracy to flourish and to provide leadership and check and balance to the executive. In a proper democracy, MPs are tasked with creating laws at the committee level and executives are tasked with implementing laws. That is why parliament is considered sovereign and not the executive. Now, for too long, Malaysian members of parliament are only tasked to debate bills at a cursory level and then rubber stamp laws drafted by the executive. As a result, members of parliament are underutilized, resulting in low productivity and sometimes low attendance. The creation of standing committees will enable MPs to engage the ministries, develop policies and consider state issues to ensure continuity of government. The creation of six new standing committees is the first step to a better and more democratic new Malaysia. So kudos to Dato' Muhammad Arif Yusof, the Speaker of Dewan Rakyat, for kick-starting this crucial parliamentary reform. However, this is just the beginning. Uh, we currently have 25 ministries and as a matter of principle, Every ministry should be accountable to one standing committee. This does not mean that we need 25 committees, as we can group committees or ministries by themes into standing committees. In our paper, we recommend a mere nine new standing committees to cover most, if not all, of the ministries. In the coming months, I urge all members of parliament to continue the reform process, support the speaker, support the executive in parliament, and support the creation of essential standing committees to cover issues such as finance, economy, foreign affairs, education, health, labour, trade, communications, housing and environment. So in, ad in addition to creating new standing committees, we should also ensure that legislative scope of work is clearly defined and adequate resources such as secretariat to re record everything, lawyers to help draft the laws and accountants to look at the financial numbers and budget are allocated for the committees to perform its duties. The, public, the paper, we have copies of the paper, quite limited. There's about 12 copies here we can circulate to you all. The paper published by office is based on our detailed examination of the Norwegian and British parliamentary system. And we have to thank the Norwegian embassy in particular for helping my office to, to uh, you know, produce this paper. The paper makes the following recommendations. Nine new standing committees to supplement the five committees we have. A special select, committees, special select committees to be established on an ad hoc basis and an annual budget about 11.4 million to operate all 14 standing committees and ad hoc select committees. Then the budget is all down here, you can read it. Yeah? So uh, again, it's a historic day. Uh, democracy requires standing committee to operate and this is a good day where the speaker has announced that we are going to create six standing committees. But as I said earlier, we have 25 ministries we should continue and I advise all members of parliament to support the move to reform to eventually have all the ministries uh, answer to at least one standing committee on issues. Okay? So I'll take questions now. Anybody got any questions? Uh, the other thing is, of course, this is a paper from my office. It is not from PKR. It's not from whatever. Lah. Yeah? Uh, we are a public policy research office. We like to write papers and we like to consider issues. So we hope that the academics out there, political scientists, and NGOs who want to read up on this material can read it up 
and they can contact us and discuss about it. Enam jawatan kuasa dengan lima jawatan kuasa sejajar ini masih sekarang ada sebelas jawatan. Ah, sekarang ada sebelas. Ya, tapi kalau kita lihat dalam enam yang baru tu. Kementerian yang dipantau oleh Standing Committee apa, ataupun jawatan kuasa tetap ni uh, cuma tiga lah. Ya? Jadi yang penting ialah isu dia ialah uh, bila kita pantau ministry ni bukan bukannya kita nak check and balance saja. Sebenarnya ahli-ahli parlimen boleh belajar daripada menteri. Apakah isu-isu semasa, apakah cara untuk me, me, to run the ministry. Jadi ini akan memastikan satu continuity of government. Kalau kerajaan bertukar, ber, ber, uh, apa tu, ada menteri baru ke, at least the members of parliament are trained to understand the core issues that are relevant and uh, and you know contemporary. Yeah. So the the standing committee is an essential element for continuity of government and for the members of parliament finally to have some role to to build the new Malaysia, to give ideas and to promote policies. I must stress again to all of you, this is really a historic day. This is a very good day for Malaysia democracy. With select committees, a lot of people don't understand the fundamental role of select committees to provide check and balance in the structure. The what we call separation of powers. Yeah? And members of parliament for the longest time have not been doing a lot of work. You know? uh, this is their opportunity to uh, perform and to help shape policy. Uh, I just joined the public accounts committee so I can see how important it is for members of parliament not just to come to parliament, makan-makan, borak-borak, vote, they should actually do additional work at the select committee stage. Uh, when, we, when we do that and perform, then the government's uh, policy will be stronger, better, more resilient. And more, more important than that also, uh, we are training the next generation of MPs you know, to become future government leaders. Yeah? So it's a training ground. Uh, no, no, this is my paper. Lah. We, we estimate. Lah. Yeah. Our research paper recommend, you know, you can form select committee, but you must give them enough support. And there's no point you give a select committee and say, uh, budget dia satu ratu ribu setahun, tak boleh lah. So we reckon that they should be given about one million on average. Yeah? Oh, that one we don't know. That one you have to ask the speaker. Uh, we're just talking about the paper that my office produced. So we will estimate uh, anggaran which is reasonable, not excessive. But uh, if you want to calculate, very simple, you need at least three staff to write all the documents when we have our select committee meetings. You need to hire one or two lawyers if we are, we are drafting laws. We need an external consultant like a finance guy to explain certain points. So all this will cost money. Yeah? So if we estimate about uh, you know, 100,000 a month, or 80,000 a month for the operation of select committee, then it's about a million a year. Lah. Yeah? Uh, the staff are not cheap. You know? <laughs> okay? For these are high-level lawyers, you have to pay them a lot of money. And the secretariat must be paid as well. Okay? Because they'll be drafting laws.